is um, obviously made this monumental sh shift from uh, two professional status now, and the club's um, seems to be going great guns on the park, albeit um, been interrupted recently. But how 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 was that a was a step of necessity with the rest of the clubs round about you? You know, with Glasgow City and then Celtic taking the step, did you kind of have to do it? No, I think. Um... The only reason that we've done it, and uh, this is the God's honest truth, is because uh, Dave King. And not because of anything other than that he believed it was the right thing to do. Which is 100% the right reason to of do course, it. Of course, of um, course. Uh, and if it wasn't for him, and it was after the World Cup, uh, it was him that instigated this. And right. albeit in a whirlwind 18 months from there, but... You see him speak in so many levels about his legacy that he wanted to leave. Um, and women's and girls football was part of that legacy. And it's also testament to our current board and it's also testament to the football department because they've continued that. Um, yeah. And they've continued to be able to support us. They've been absolutely amazing throughout this period, which has been really difficult in so many aspects for so many clubs. But it was ultimately, um, it wasn't through necessity. It was through Dave King 100% believing that it was the right thing to do. So it uh, sounds like you saved the men's side and, and the women's side, which is great. And, and, and it's all just the one club now as well. The same when I was when Ella was there, it all became part of the one department and you've really seen everyone pulling together. And as you've seen with the men's side and with the women's side before you stop, you know, if everyone's pulling in the one direction, the Rangers were a hard force to stop, you know, and hopefully yeah. that, that continues. Now, it must have been great to get the back in. I mean, you've, as you say, you've came from being the, the, the kit woman to the physio to the, how proud were you when, when Dave King did did say that and, and was going to back you guys? Uh, proud, scared. <laughs> <laughs> Everything, to be honest, because... Uh, it's a club that means so much to me as well. It's Rangers. It's um, and but I've been really fortunate, and not it's not a burden of expectation that's on me solely. I've got uh, Craig Mulholland's been absolutely amazing with me. Ross Wilson has been amazing with me. Uh, all the commercial department, James Bisgrove, Alison for Side, Natalie, and there's loads of people that have all bought into this, and that support, you know, has been. Uh, needed and required at times because it's yeah. it, it's been a real world one. Uh, when Craig and I talk about it now, we we sit down and we go, we've came a long way in eighteen months, but the Rangers mentality and mindset is that we're relentless. So actually, we've came a long way, but every day we sit and go, what's next? That's how that. do we keep it up a level? How do we do this? How how are we going to drive this forward? Uh, looking at every kind of single scenario, so yeah, but we've came a long way in eighteen months, but we we know that we've still got so much more to go. Brilliant. So with with the left into professional comes expectation. So you know, there's your Rangers. You're expected to win things now, and I get that you're maybe playing catch up on uh, on Glasgow City, especially. But has there been the expectations from the club itself put on you guys to deliver? Absolutely, it's, and that's the thing, uh, I was talking, <laughs> I had this conversation this morning, I said to people, when you ask for a quality, you can't pick and choose what parts of it you want, so for us, we couldn't choose to get extra investment and then not have that expectation on us to win, uh, so you can't say, give us loads of more money, but we'll not take that burden of expectation, um, and for the women's team, absolutely the expectation is to win, however, there's also a recognition that is it going to be plain sailing at this point? Probably not. There's going to be bumps in the road. It would be naive of us to not think that there would be bumps in the road, whether it be on or off the pitch or whatever. Mm -hmm. But absolutely, that expectation is there. Um, but like all other aspects of the club, we just are not focused on the end result. It's process driven. Um, so it's about making sure that every process that we have in place from administration to football to scouting players to like every aspect we focus on the process and if we do the process properly we'll get the right outcome and that's it and that's what it's all about it's we've been prepared now, i was 
I was looking at the signings coming in, you know, when the, the professional when he's, he's announced, and it was like, you know, like a, almost like a who's who of, of Scottish football and Nicola Dockery, Sam Kerr, I could name Megan Bell from Northern Ireland who was banging him in before he started. I mean, I could mention so much, so much more, but that was a real signal intent from you because you're not signing these players to to what not win anything. Amy, is that right? Yeah, we're not. We never signed them to come and uh, you know just kind of fly the flag for Rangers. We, <laughs> we signed them to come in and win. But I think that there's there's probably two things about that. So there's the the main one is the professional players which is amazing for the girls because actually for so many um, of them, some of them like Nick Doc used to be a uh, work with people with dementia as well as trying to train full time as a professional so. football player. So they're, they're full time professional players. Brilliant. But the other side of that was it's not all about money in women's football. So I'll caveat that by saying it's probably getting that way, but it's not all about money. And it was really important as a club that we balanced off by making sure one, they had comfortable lives. It's not like it's not anywhere near what some male footballers, but, but they've got a a wage and an income that's suitable and that they'll be able to live and be comfortable being a professional football player. But the other side of that was the infrastructure um, and being treated like a professional player. So not having to wash your own kit, not having to kind of. Um, you know, make your own lunches and stuff, being able to eat at the training centre, being able to have analysis uh, clipped by an analyst, uh, being able to have your own individual sports science programme, access to top quality facilities in terms of physios and rehab. And it's that amalgamation of everything that uh, attracted the players because the players just want to be professional football players. I think we've seen in the past, like Rangers, the name will carry and it will get interest from players, of course it will, but to keep a hold of them, you know, you need to make sure that everything's in place and it sounds like you, you guys are well down the road. Now, I want to spend a bit of time talking about, you know, an exciting, the gate are back training, which is fantastic. Yeah. That's in the last couple of weeks, is that, Amy, the last couple of weeks you've been back? Yeah. Yeah, since last week, hey, this week's our second week and the sun's came out for us, so we're delighted about that. <laughs> Don't get used to that. That doesn't happen up at the Hummel training centre. That's a definite. Eh, sorry, the training centre. There you go. I'm saying the only. I'll get Martin to edit that. Eh? But up at the training centre. Um, so y your games are restarting on April the fourth. Uh, I suppose that's the focus then for the next couple of weeks. Yeah, we've got a couple of friendly scheduled in, oh, so um, we'll play play the games. It's really, really difficult. It's an unknown circumstance, um, and I have to say, I'm really thankful I'm not a sports scientist because when you try and plan for having almost three months off and uh, as much as the girls were doing running programs or that, like, they were doing their own training and trying to keep themselves fit um, to go back to doing repetitive action of kicking and different things, things that you take for granted as a football player because when you've always done it it's like um, and we've got three weeks now to prepare for that and it, in my head uh, everyone keeps talking to me about the first seven games but they're done, they're gone it seems a long time ago. It's in the past. Um, so it's new and uh, mentally, I think, psychologically, it's going to be really important as to how like people come back from that. The girls are really focused just now, but I guess that lockdown in society is like currently has been really impacted by everything that we've been going through. and. Um, we just need to do everything that we can to make sure that they go on the pitch in the best condition that they can. No, that's it. No, that's all you can do. Uh, I, I'm, I'd imagine their spirits would have been lifted when they announced they could get back, and I can imagine how good training's been the last ten days, flying, and you know, and they'll be dying to get on that pitch again. Now, yeah, I've even cracked this smile. Oh my goodness, my God, it must be Friday. Then. It must be Friday. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, the, I wanted Malky Thompson's obviously a uh, first team manager at the moment, supported by a few others. As you said, he's really he's been about the professional game forever, you know, and he's been mm -hmm. assistant to Barry Ferguson and you know my favourite player. I let him name drop him in there. So, I mean, he must be so excited to take this group of players forward, you know, and, and obviously Greg, Greg Vignal started that Malky's come in. Mm -hmm. His buzz about the place must be great for the for the for the for the for the women. I don't think I've ever quite. Uh, have you met Malky? Have you met him? I've, I've seen him from afar. I've never met him personally. 
Yeah, he's a really unique character and you can tell why he's been about um, Barry Ferguson, Alex McLeish, like the managers that he's worked with uh, and alongside. And when 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 you speak to him and you're about him, like really, really knowledgeable, uh, but just a really good guy. Um, and I remember when uh, he first came on, he told me that he... Um, he had he's got three nieces and unfortunately their mum passed away and oh, right. he just said I want to do so well for the women's game. I want oh, to right. do so well for the girls because I want to be able to show that, you know, regardless of whether you're male or female, that you that you have ability and and he really came on this like journey for himself. I remember his like one of his first training sessions he shouted to one of the girls man on and then he turned it to me and went <laughs> Can I say that? Is that is that all right? You know, see, what I mean? honestly, and coming from watching <laughs> girls football, women's football, you used to shout that sometimes. We, we shout that. It's just yeah. like normal, but for him, he was like, "Can I actually? Can I say that?" But he's, you know, he's came full circle because for him, which is amazing, they're just football players, and that's Brilliant. the mentality that he treats everyone with. They are football players, male, Brilliant. female, whatever. They're a football player and he'll treat them like that. But more importantly, they're a human and he also treats them like that. And that's what makes him really special and unique. And he's a, he's brought great energy and enthusiasm. Um, I speak to him all the time. He counsels me, I counsel him. Um, and and on, he's been the best. He's just, if you win, you're having a bad day, he'll make you smile. And that, that's... Uh, but you need to know. Yeah. yeah.